So this talk will start whenever there's an earthquake. Okay, yeah, this just made an earthquake. Um, you probably didn't feel it, or maybe you did. Uh, <laughs> but it just that usually, um, well, you probably didn't feel it because it happened very far from where we, from where we are right now. Uh, I think there's an earthquake in every two, sometimes eight, sometimes 20 minutes. But mo the majority of earthquakes, humans cannot feel them. But Earth is constantly moving. It, it's constantly, it's constantly evolving. The, the tectonic plates create and release tension, and they create earthquakes. And earthquakes are part of our nature, but they're still a very mysterious phenomenon. I've always been interested in movement because I'm a, I'm a dancer and a choreographer. And since I was studying dance in college, uh, I wanted to perceive movement in the most deeper way I could. And as a choreographer, I realized that actually you can create movement and you can find movement. Uh, there's many things that move around us that we cannot perceive. And I knew if I would unite myself with technology, I could perceive all these imperceptible movements that we cannot perceive. And I did some uh, uh, different projects. First, I did some projects to find out the speed of the people walking in front of me, then about to, to, to feel the presence behind my body. But then with the, with the experience of all this, I realized that actually Earth is constantly, it's constantly shaking, moving and shaking. So my aim became to transform this massive, huge and natural movement to my body. So now, since 2013, my body is permanently connected to online seismographs that allows me to perceive the seismic activity of the planet in real time. So I have a couple of implants on my feet to transform all the earthquakes to vibrations in my body. So now I'm here in, in Manchester, sorry, not in Amsterdam, in Manchester. I don't know where I am anymore. So I mean, I mean Manchester, but if there's an earthquake in Japan or in California or in Greece, I would feel a vibration inside my body. Depending on the intensity of the, of the earthquake, the vibration I feel is a stronger or less strong. So by now, since I've been perceiving the earthquakes, I think I felt around 642,300 earthquakes. And I, I'm okay now, so it's okay, don't worry. Um, so at the beginning, I had to get used to feeling all these vibrations constantly. So uh, when I was so when I first tried, when I was talking, I would feel the seismic activity. Maybe I would stop talking because I would get distracted with the earthquakes. Also, when I was uh, I was sleeping, I would wake up more often because of this the seismic activity. Now I just wake up whenever there's a really big earthquake. Um, but I have to say that I sleep very, very deep, so I got used to it very easily. Maybe it wouldn't work uh, to everyone, but for me it works. So yeah, so usually a way that I have to describe it is like I feel like now I have two heartbeats, like my own heartbeat and the earth beat, that, having, that it has its own rhythm inside my body. So I add this extra beat in my perception. And when I, when I got used to, to feeling all these vibrations, after a while, it became like a new sense. It's what I call the seismic sense, the sense of feeling the seismic activity of the planet in real time. Um, I also, uh, a, uh, a good way, like a mental image that I have, especially when, when I perform, when I stand still, is that I have roots under my feet that go deep and deep under the earth and spread around the globe. So I imagine that I have these roots that reaches all the parts of the earth and through these roots I, I feel the seismic activity when the earth moves. But I see this as cyborg art, like the art of creating your own senses. I feel like now artists, uh, we no longer need to use technology as a tool. We can use technology as part of our body and change our perception of reality. So I guess the artwork of a cyborg artist would be the creation uh, of, a new, of a new sense. So my seismic sense would be my artwork, 
But the problem with Cyborg Art is the, is the artwork happens inside the artist. So I guess I'm like, I'm the only one in the audience of, of my own art. I'm the only one experiencing this new, this new perception. So in order to share what I feel, I transform this, this my, the, my perception to, to other works. And one of my pieces, uh, I have a dance piece. That is It's evolving like the Earth does, and it's also an interpretation of, of the perception of earthquakes. Another way that I have to, uh, to, to shape this experience is through percussion. So I, I have two ways of doing this. One is I play a big, uh, a big drum, and um, the rhythm of the, of the piece is based on the rhythm of the tectonic plates. So, so in this case, uh, Earth is the composer of the piece. And I have two ways of doing this. One is based on, on real time, and the other uh, thing that I do is I create a scores based on the seismic activity that had happened in a specific place. So for example, the first one I did was in Mexico. And I transformed all, this, all the seismic activity that had happened in Mexico in the last 50 years, and I put them all together in a score that lasted 10 minutes. So I played it in Mexico, and the people, and the people from Mexico could hear how their country had been moving in the last uh, 50 years. And uh, of course, since I was experiencing this, this new relation, like this, my new sense and this new body part, uh, apart from um, changing my relation to the planet, they also changed my identity. Uh, uh, actually, I, I've, I've never been interested in science fiction or in technology itself. Actually, as a teenager, I passed an era, an era that I was very anti-technology. Because I, I, I thought that technology was very unnatural and would distance me from reality. But since I, I've been united in technology and experienced reality in another way, uh, actually, mainly journalists start saying to us that we were cyborgs. Uh, to me, they say to me, and also to my childhood friend, Neil Harbison, that he has an antenna implanted in his head that transforms colors into sounds. So mainly journalists start saying that we that we were cyborgs, and I was like, am I a cyborg? I mean, maybe I am, but I felt so far away. So it got me thinking, and actually, uh, some years ago, I went to visit Manfred Klein, and so Manfred Klein is one of the two people that, that coined the word cyborg. And we went to visit him. He lives in, in, South, uh, in South California, in the middle of the vineyards. And we went to see him, and we saw like a very small old man with a wide, long beard, and, and we asked him, what, what is a cyborg? And he took two days to reply. It was like a very long answer, like a lot of hours of, and, and of course, I mean, I have to confess, sometimes I disconnected from, the, from, the, from his answers, but I realized during this talk that, uh, that actually his definition of cyborg included me. So now I can say I identify myself as a cyborg because I feel like I'm a cybernetic organism because I have a new sense and a new body part that is made by cybernetics. Since I've been experienced this, I decided in, in 2010, Neil and I co-founded the Cyborg Foundation, basically with three aims. One is to help humans to become cyborgs. The other one is to defend the cyborg rights, the right of designing yourself. And the, the other one is to promote cyborg art as an artistic movement. Also, with all these experiments, I also realize that I feel trans, trans species because I have a new sense that is no longer defined as a human sense. So I don't feel 100% human. 
And I realized with all these that uh, there's lots of people that don't feel 100% human. I don't feel 100% human because I have a cybernetic organ, but there's many people that don't feel 100% human for other reasons. And also we found it that in species society, there's, a, there's like the, cyber, the social project of the Sci Foundation. We have a studio in Barcelona where we have a new sense lab where we create uh, new senses for, for other people. And I like to comment in the logo in the Transpecious Society because I like it a lot because we feel that it's, uh, humans are not a closed circle. I feel like humans, we are an open circle that we can evolve and design how we want to be and how we want to, to, yeah, to be and to perceive. I don't feel that we have always been in the same way. We used to be a bacteria. We were uh, in a species on the sea, then we were in the trees. Now we are humans, but now with the technology, maybe we will we become something else. And this, I think, it's a natural process that we are evolved in constant evolution, in constant transformation. Um, but now that I that I'm a cyborg, and actually I don't feel closer to robots or to machines, I feel closer to to the Earth because I can feel it's moving all the time. I I think it's very different to know that the Earth is moving than actually to feel that the Earth is moving feeling it's like implicating yourself. And I also can relate more to other species living in this planet because maybe I can understand better how, how they relate to, to Earth. So uh, sometimes we don't need to think about what, what we think is very unnatural or very, from science fiction, it's actually very natural. If we, look, we have a look uh, at the other species, we will see that uh, other animals can fly, some anim animals can perceive ultraviolet or infrared, some, some animals can create light by themselves. Even immortality already exists in nature because there's a jellyfish that never dies and keeps regenerating. So I think we can get uh, very inspired by the other species that, that live, that we share the planet with. And we, we see this as RR, like revealed reality, because we feel that with these new senses, we can explore a reality that exists, but we cannot perceive. So we don't think that we, that we do virtual reality or augmented reality. We call it RR, revealed reality, because we reveal a reality that exists, but our senses cannot, cannot perceive. I think hum, um, humans have always been transforming our environment in order to live more comfortable, but maybe now it's time to transform ourselves and design ourselves in order to understand better the planet we live in. Also, my, I'm, I'm actually permanently connected to the seismic activity of the moon, to the moonquakes. And this actually allows me to, to be physically on Earth, but having my feet on the moon. Actually, if we use internet as a new sense, we can feel things that happen very far from where we are. So our senses no longer need to be attached to our body. We can feel things that happen in the other side of the planet, or even in, in space. And I call this to be a sense drawn out to feel this, uh, to have a new sense exploring a space. I think this is quite comfortable and like we can all be like at home, like in the sofa at home, and then having, having a new sense exploring a space. So it's like the DT version of being an astronaut, like literally being a, 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 yeah, we no longer need to be an astronaut and go physically in a space to explore it. We can remain on Earth and have a new sense that explores, explores it. So since I've been perceiving intermittently moonquakes, uh, I transform also this as a, a, as a performance. And a way that I have to do with this is with, with the gong. I, so the gong represents the moon because actually the moonquakes happen less often but last longer. So in my performance, the, the drum represents the earth and the gong, the moon. And just uh, to end, I would like to end like uh, with a wish. Uh, I wish that we are, as a species, we can, we can decide to use technology to have a positive impact. Uh, I wish that technology that is already all around us could, could help us to, to understand better where we are and the planet we live in. And I wish that technology could help us to create more empathy and more admiration to, to the planet, to the Earth, to other species and also to space. Thank you.